Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll look at the Yanni C, Junzi C, Junais. Sorry, I pronounced the name completely wrong. Diesel heater. Let's get started. This video is about a diesel heater, and this time I'm really excited about this. Different brand, still, um, it's considered a Chinese diesel heater, but this unit might be different than the ones I was reviewing. And up there is, for example, the Sunster diesel heater, which I was reviewing and I was actually using. I also had one of those LF Pros diesel leaders, I believe they were called. Um, I did not use that one out of one specific reason because the one I had was not made for travel into high elevation, so it didn't have an auto adjustment. I ended up with the Sunster, which had some elevation adjustment automatic, and this is pretty cool. So this time we will look at this unit and let's see what it's capable of, let's see what's in the box, and also how easy or difficult it might be to set up. All right, let's check it out. So here we have the entire, really the entire package out. Everything that comes in the box, you can see we have the diesel heater itself with the tank incorporated in here. This is actually dimension-wise what you can see. And we have a couple other things we'll go over. But first, let me really quick talk about this specific diesel heater because I picked it because it is a 12 volt, eight kilowatt diesel heater, all in one diesel heater. This is pretty cool, pretty impressive. It does work with a 110 volt. So you can connect it to your wall outlet, just simple. It seems to be also cable of 12 volt as well. So I'll show you where to connect it later. Um, it is a diesel heater, as I mentioned. It has an overheating protection up to 200 Celsius. Car air conditioning type heating, fuel consumption, 0.16. And working temperature of the heater is minus 40 Celsius until plus 50 Celsius. Well, that's pretty good if you ask me. That's all I wanted to have. So we do have an installation video also. So you could follow if you want to this QR code. This leader, we talked about it. That's in the box. We have here um, some clamps. We have a, it looks like the exhaust, no, right, the air intake, a little remote. We have the power supply, as well as here's another power supply over there, which uh, we could use for the 12 volt. We do have here uh, the uh, so that's the exhaust pipe, a little bit damaged from shipping. Same with um, the hot air. Sorry, the air intake pipe, which is the small one, and the big hot air pipe, which pushes the heat out and you can connect to anything, but you can buy them also in a different, more insulated way if you want to. And the muffler, muffler including some clamps as well. And then you have, really quick, you can see we do have a display over here. We do have some controls, some knobs, some light, uh, some heating, some on off. Then we have here the heater itself. And I would assume that this is the warm air where it goes out. And then we have, of course, some air coming through here, also going in. So it pulls air in here, pretty simple. And let's shift it here really quick because that's that's pretty much where you will see down there and it looks like it was already primed um, we have two and they have different size we have two um, holes basically I want to call it one is for the exhaust and the other one is the air intake for burning the diesel for the combustion chamber and then pretty cool we also have those uh, brackets here so you could mount it to the bottom somewhere where we need it. It looks like it's accessible, so that's very important. By the way, what I didn't mention, it does come with a Bluetooth functionality, so we'll also test that. All right, let's get started with um, just connecting the air intake and then afterwards the exhaust. So as long as there is no diesel inside, we can still put it and lay it on the side, so that is not a problem. To get started with the air intake, um, you can see the right one is pretty loose. The left one is fitting way better for this one. So keep that in mind. That's how you can easily test, okay, it fits or it doesn't fit. Be careful with um, here also the um, diesel line. 
That's quite interesting that there's no little clamp or anything. It looks like it works. Going to open this package up. There is a bunch of stuff in it. First thing I will do, I will take those and connect them just here on the side. 12 volt harness can be connected just to have them in place for the future that I don't lose them. Then next I'll take for the air intake, one of those clamps, orienting them like so, so I can actually get access to them. Actually using my impact because it's just quicker to connect. You can use your normal uh, Phillips head, totally not a problem. First one, and I will bend it in the other direction because I don't want to bend this in the wrong way. Next one, I'll be using the exhaust pipe. And as you can see, the exhaust pipe is sadly a little bit bent over here. So I wish to see which side is the right one without destroying it. Yep, looks like this one fits. Orienting, making sure the orientation is going in the right direction so it's easy for me to access. So now, let me see if I can bend it here. Ideally in a 90 degree angle. So you see there is, you can see that there is kind of a gap. Still, we need to make space. So it means they have some angle or elbows, 90 degree, which you can also buy as adapter, which is in my opinion better than bending it. That's just my personal opinion, but you know, you'll make it work, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna connect this air intake and same as before we'll be using in this case a clamp connected here and well now we have done that part now we can do the muffler i actually was hoping that there is one more but it doesn't look like wow so in my opinion there is something missing yeah, I wish there would be one more clamp, but I didn't see that. Looks like one clamp missing, but uh, clamps are not expensive, so you can buy it easily. All right, now you can see I lift it up just that I have enough space on the side. When I place it later on the crown, you will see it um, from the side, and then we can talk about that. But I don't want to start it yet. The only thing what I want to do is getting power towards this little unit. So let's do a little walk around before we continue with anything else. And when I say walk around, look at this. We do have here on this side, display, output, heat output. We do have here on top, diesel fill cap and it has an on and an off, which I guess is for breathing. And then we have here the logo. We do have underneath here enough space for exhaust pipe. On the other side, you can see that's where it pulls the air in and then it heats it up. Then we have a 12 volt connector over here. And then we have here a little protected one of 12 volt connector. And then on the other side, much the same logo. And by the way, this is aluminum. So we could take this off and look inside, which is pretty cool. I like that. So I took out those bolts. So we can on both sides actually. So, so this side, this side and the other side. So we can actually look inside. Let's see what it actually looks like. So you see, here's a little see-through. That's to understand the filling. How much diesel we have left. So that's the full aluminum body. And this is, surprise, surprise, the unit. That's the unit itself, which gets warm. Plastic housing. Then let's see, here we see our diesel tank. Is this a three liter? I have to double check. I'll write it in here, so right below. And then we have here some wires and whatnot hold in with uh, nothing. So, so when I lift it up, I can see here's the pump. It has some rubber around, it's connected here. There's no clamp whatsoever, but there's nipples. And then here, that's where this one should go um, to the unit itself. And you've seen it outside in the earlier video where I connected the exhaust pipes. That's where this hose goes. And it's an electrical connector. So it is a very simple setup. And what I usually don't like as much is when it's, you know, it's just driving around. So it means when there's a rough, imagine you have it in your RV or somewhere else. 
in your car. It's moving around the whole time. It will make probably some noise at one point. It would be great if they can just tie it down. Also for all the connections. I do not want to get them loose. I don't want to have diesel spinning around. You know, not only because of the fumes, it's also because of this is burnable, spa, burnable stuff. So I don't want to mess with that. So that would be great, but it is a tight housing. It's a tight fit. As again, imagine still, I would like to see the tank at least fixed in place. Um, versus here the other side, this massive thing, which is really good, eight kilowatt. It feels like it's better in place, but it's also heavy, I guess. That's the probably heavy, heaviest part. What do you assume? Anyway, so I hope that was helpful. For those of you who want to know how the build quality of the whole thing is. Yes, the displays were right behind here. Didn't see that coming off. All right, now we'll be connecting the one, one, 110 volt power supply. So, so you can plug it in without any issues. First, the app is called Air Heater BLE. All right, what I've not done, using the exhaust, the hot air pipe, connecting it, but it'll be here. But I can't. But I can say already that this clamp is too small. It looks like, so I won't be able to use that one either, which is a bummer because it should be, you know, at least a little bit better thought through. Anyways, this is pretty short, so I will not be using that one. I have my own longer ones, which I will be using. I'll link in the description as well. I think that's just just more casual, better. And you know what? We have some brackets which we could use for the pipes. Um, but yeah, I'm not using that either. So I have power on the unit. I'll heat it up, start it here, and I'll connect the app at the same time, where I would say, because then we might be able to see something, what's going on. All right, that means here, air heat up PLE. I'll be using this one, allowing it, no device found, scan for devices, dot scan, and there it is already. Clicking here on the connection on the right. Let's see if we can connect it. And there it is. Nice. All right. Just in general, you need to prime it first. So it needs to run a little bit to burn in and everything else. So there might be smell or not. So when you start the first time, take your time, let it run for at least 15 to 30 minutes. I don't know how much the burn in time is, but just give it enough time. Very important. And then it's just depending on the mode. You can see it. On a medical level, you can set it to those levels here, you can see, etc. But you can also change the mode, manual gear to the temperature, and it will reach the temperature. But I don't know how smart this one is, so we'll see. Now you might hear the clicking, that's a pump, it's priming everything. Ignition preparation, and I'll just let it run, very important. Just a little bit. And yes, we do have. And you didn't see me using it, but and one of those remotes, sorry, it's blue um, because it's focused on the display at the moment. But here we go, turn it back on the display. And I could change with the remote. That's myself, but you see fumes are coming in here. I don't want to have that, so I'll have to blow them out. I'll let this prime now for the next Let's say 20 minutes and then I'll come back. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I have to test it if it actually heats up. All right, I had it running for a while. Let's see. The temperature coming out right now seems to be around 51, 40, 48. That's pretty good. It's usually, so you have to be careful with the muffler back there because that one is can reach the 200 degree. Um, can be very hot. All right, that's pretty much it. I'll be setting up for probably camping or something like that. And it always takes a little time when you turn it off, by the way. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much it. Don't interrupt the power. Just when you turn it off, turn it off and then let it just come to its own stop. That's very important and it takes a probably a few minutes until it's completely off, just to make sure you follow that process, otherwise um, you will not be able to fire it back up. 
yeah, let me know what you think about this unit. It has a different form factor, uh, but still similar to the Sunster, which is cool, interesting, but has more power. And one thing, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to double check as well was uh, if it does have some elevation adjustment, because that's, I think, is something which one or another might really like to see or have. Especially when you go skiing, when you do that kind of stuff, that might be very important. By the way, that's also the price, because uh, it might help you for Toyota Miner if that's exactly what you want. I like the Bluetooth app. Uh, it does advertise with um, low noise. I think it has similar noise than other diesel heaters I heard as well. The pump is normal, so that's, I, I haven't felt like it's loud or less noisy. So in my case, I don't see any elevation adjustment, but it says Impress warmth at 5,500 meter. So I guess it does work up to that. And then the air might be getting too thin and then you have to manually adjust it. Keep that in mind. No automatic adjustment here. Looks like I don't see that at least. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.